Thanks, Guru. Good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, when Guru asked me, you know, talk about what are the challenges and, uh, and opportunities for SDN, so I thought, okay, let me just focus on what our customers are going through and how SDN could help our customer network transition. So, the focus of this talk is about why SDN for realizing a convergence that our customers are really uh, moving towards, you know. So that is essentially focus of my uh, presentation. But before I start, I just wanted to introduce Ericsson. You know, many of you might know Ericsson. Some people think Ericsson is like a uh, mobile handset vendor. Some people think Ericsson is a radio vendor. But in reality, Ericsson is the number one equipment vendor for service providers such as Verizon and AT&T. It's not only equipment vendor, but also we are one of the top five operators in the world. You know, we manage uh, top mobile operators' networks. So if you combine the subscriber base that we operate networks for, we rank one of the top five network operators in the world. At the same time, we started managing the data center and clouds for our service product networks. So you can see why Ericsson is so keen on software-defined networking. So with that introduction, let me just talk about what our service product industry is going through. You know, it's like a perfect storm we are seeing. You know, for the first time, the service models are changing. Ten years ago, for service providers, it's all about voice SMS. You know, but now it's moving towards ecosystem base. You know, with the mobile broadband and video growth, it's all about ecosystem partners. It's not just self-contained voice and SMS. You see, the business models are transforming. It's not about just, you know, customer or uh, subscriber paying to uh, uh, the service provider. You know, right now we are talking about revenue sharing between operators and, uh, and other ecosystem players. So the business models are going from simple to complex. Service models are going from just with the open devices and applications, it's going towards ecosystem based. At the same time, service providers are looking at the, the new markets towards cloud, towards 50 billion. We call it as 50 billion, our vision, but 50 billion means including machine to machine. You know, today we have got 5 billion mobile subscribers. The idea is by 2020, we might have 50 billion connections, you know, machine to machine, healthcare, in the intelligent transport system, which is connected car. So think about number of connections that can grow up to 50 billion. Today we have close to 8 billion including internet, you know, uh, uh, internet uh, subscriber base, mobile subscriber base, and others. So while we are seeing these transformations from services and business models and expanding into new markets, that is driving the way we architect the next generation network. The service models and the business models are driving the way we design the next generation network. <coughs> so that's where the convergence play a role. Next generation conversion networks. How we realize that. So we are looking at why SDN, how SDN can help realizing that next generation conversion networks. How it can address the business drivers that our operators are looking at, as Stu LB mentioned from Verizon. It's all about economics. How can we reduce the total cost of ownership? How can we improve the revenue? How can you enable new services? How can we provide, you know, how can we offer a programmable network where you can enable third-party applications? And how can we move from just connectivity provider to experience provider? Because user behavior is changing because of the smartphones, because of the app stores, the user behavior has been changing. So how can service provider become relevant by offering experience, delivering the applications to the end user. So how SDK, SDN can help realize those business drivers, service providers? So this is a context we are working towards. With this context, what we are looking at is how SDN can help transitioning from present network to the future network. And I would like to talk about how it happens. At the same time, I would like to talk about what is the approach that Ericsson is taking to do that. 
what I will not talk about is protocols. <laughs> you know, that's something has been spoken enough so far. So if you really look at Ericsson, right, we have seen this. We have seen it in the 1990s, so-called split architecture. There's something called classify switch, if many of you know, uh, late 90s. Classify switch is a monolithic device that has got signaling and beta. Those days it's called beta. It's not a data plane, okay? So they're all together. It's a monolithic device. And what we have seen, uh, and at that time, Ericsson had a number one market share in the classify switch market called AXE, AX. But we have taken a bold step in transforming that monolithic device into something called split architecture, you see? So those days it's called split architecture, in 1999, 2000. So that happened moving from class by PSTN towards voice over IP, okay? The same thing that we are seeing today with the software defined networking, how we decouple applications from underlying infrastructure, how we decouple the control plane from underlying forwarding slash data plane. So it's a similar concept, okay? So similar concept then, similar concepts now. How we can scale application control and forwarding planes independently? How we can provide service velocity? Those days, I was looking at the notes 12 years ago, the same statements. Service velocity, what does it mean, service velocity? How can we introduce new services rapidly? How can we have rapid introduction of new services? Services and our applications are used uh, you know, with the same meaning. So essentially rapid introduction of new applications slash services. The same uh, themes between these two. But what has changed between then and now? Because of the new services and business models that have evolved with the open devices and open applications, that is really pushing the network to be more programmable. You know, currently the networks are rigid. There's no programmability concept. How can you enable the new applications rapidly? How can you enable third party applications, partnered applications rapidly on the network? So that's the difference now. The second difference that we see now is a virtualization. What I mean by virtualization? Uh, between then, in 99 and now, the operators built purpose-built or application-specific networks, overlay networks. One network for video, one network for data, one network for voice. I'll talk about what it means. But now, with SDN, the idea is to talk, uh, you know, build a single network and virtualize it for multiple services. So that's the difference between then and now. So that's why Ericsson is serious about SDN because we have seen this. However, uh, we learned from the past one decade in terms of how market transitions happen and we'd like to develop the feature with SDN for our customers. So with that, let's look at what it means, how the networks are evolving. Why is DN in that network transition? So as I mentioned earlier, in the past, the operators have built overlay networks. If you really look at operators network, you have got access, transport, control, and services. That's how you can categorize. Access being, you know, base stations, these lamps, and so on and so forth. Transport being, you know, packet or circuit transport. And control being, you know, uh, uh, David Volver talking about provider-based control such as AAA, HSS, you know, policy, and so on and so forth. And services being applications. That's where you see voice applications, video applications. So if you look at this layered architecture, in the past, they, the service providers built application-specific networks. It's a vertical integration, okay? And then now they're trying to look at how do we provide that convergence? So you must have heard about the term called fixed mobile convergence. What it means is, essentially, how can I have a single network for any type of access? So now they built a single IP network for wireless and wireline access. But on the control side, 
still they have different control mechanisms. Although they achieved a common control using IMS slash soft switch mechanism, but still they have got different ways of video delivery. There is something called DBH for mobile, something else for uh, media flow for, uh, you know, in this case in the CDMA world uh, by Qualcomm and IPTV for wireline and something else. But in the middle, we have got internet service providers such as Google. They are able to provide these applications seamless irrespective of access type, you know, so between any device. So looking at this, operators are saying, okay, how can I move to the next transition, next convergence, so-called ITN network convergence. That's what it's known as in the industry. So what it means is that, okay, now that I realize a common network transport, how can I realize the control and services functions and virtualize them in a data center environment? So this is what the service providers are going through. So what is that SDN can do? What are the opportunities and challenges that SDN can address? Where can it address? So from our point of view, SDN challenges and opportunities lie within this transition. As Stu talked about, okay, it's not just uh, talking about target architecture, but how can we transition from today to the target architecture? So that's where we believe SDN has number of challenges and tremendous opportunities to solve number of issues transitioning from today's network to the future network. So let's look at what today's network is. You know, how simple or how complex it is. So if you look at it, if you look at it, you have the transport network, access aggregation, edge, backbone, you know, the simple packet transport. Then you have got the control network where the identity and policy and all sorts of control mechanisms, that's what uh, David Ward was talking about, provider-based controls, schemes. Then you've got uh, applications. So the idea is that what is the impact of SDN? What are the challenges and opportunities that SDN has uh, in terms of decoupling, control and forwarding, providing the network programmability, and virtualization at transport, control, and services layer. And that can take us to simple converged network. So this is what, from our point of view, from Ericsson's point of view, we are looking at what are the new business models that can influence the CDN and cloud on overall architecture. And how can we virtualize such a, a network and, and provide the programmability so what we have done is we have taken multiple use case scenarios. We have taken access aggregation, service edge, multi-layer, as well as a cloud. Then we have done a complete architectural study. You know, I've taken Dave Letterman top 10 questions kind of example. So what are the top 10 questions? We have started with applications. It's all about traffic characterization. What are, what's the traffic modeling today? with a hope for next five years, certain traffic modeling and traffic characterization. So what does, what does it mean in terms of adding new functions to the network? You know, caching, transcoding, you know, where do you do that in the network? So, and what are the use case scenarios based on the new functions and based on the traffic modeling? What are the use case scenarios for the wide area network and the cloud? And what are the functional scalability and reliability requirements for such use case scenarios. And what is a control and forwarding functional split for those requirements? You know, where do you uh, uh, put some of the centralized functions in a controller side? Where do you distribute, you know, in terms of time sensitivity to do it on a data plane or forwarding plane? And what's the economical modeling when you do this? You know, we all know technical benefits, but what are the economical benefits to do that? And uh, how can we resource, you know, how can we optimize these resources across compute, storage, and network? Just one minute. So how can we provide resiliency that Stu LB was talking about in a multi-control environment to really address what carrier class is looking for? And 
obviously, how can we do transitioning from today to the future using SDM? So this is what the approach we have taken. And you can see how many challenges and opportunities SDN has. From our point of view, SDN is a, major, a big concept, and OpenFlow happens to be one component of it. You know, it's a protocol of choice. But we don't want in, you know, we don't want to confuse ourselves with that OpenFlow is all about SDN. But no, SDN is a concept where OpenFlow is a choice of protocol. So with that in mind. We have done two major prototypes. We have got access aggregation prototype you can see outside for wide area network with OpenFlow 1.1 MPLS implementation. We also have the cloud prototype. As Stu said, they're very much interested in elastic networking. How can we do elastic networking using SDM? So we prototype that. The second prototype is the virtualization. So with that, <laughs> I think I will end my presentation, but the idea is to talk about the SDN in an architectural transition, how Ericsson is viewing SDN to realize such an architectural transition. Okay, thank you. Thank